Well, good afternoon. You join us in the BBC's Doctor Who corner. I'm next to the TARDIS and I've also got two very special gentlemen next to me here. I've got Mark Howes and M Mark Summers, sorry, and William Howes. You are a casting director and you, my lovely, are a contributor to the Doctor Who magazine. Let's start off. Obviously, great choice in many people's opinions. What do you think, Jodie Whittaker, good or bad from a casting point of view? I think it's interesting. It's always interesting to sometimes play the opposite. You know, an actor is an actor. It doesn't matter if it's male or if it's female. Do you think she'll bring something extra to it? A lot of the female fans, particularly there's been one video clip trending on social media of this lovely young girl, say, yes, it's a girl. I mean, from that point of view, she's hopefully going to provide you know, a good role model to loads of young girls out there. Well, I hope she provides a role model to not only young girls, you know, but young guys out there as well. You know? And I think it's, it, it's good to see you know, women take on that part because from a casting director's point of view it, it's about embodying the character itself rather than just going okay that's male that's female and it's one of those things that maybe should have been done a long time ago you know well after who Do doctor who is an alien with two hearts so you know why not some people have been saying they should have done it before now yeah why not why not why not indeed you know it's a, it's about because you know if you see the doctor he's 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 kind of well before it was a he it's a he's got female and he's got male within him, so he's got the kind of te yeah, the kind of previous one. So you're you're never too sure about his gender anyway. So why not make it a female? And how long do you think the casting process would have taken to, to you know to make this decision? We're on, you know on the thirteenth Doctor now. How much thought do you think went into it? Um, I think the BBC actually thought a lot about it, and I think it's also to do with PR, the right timings, making sure you know they get the right person. And it's one of those kind of things. It's like casting kind of James Bond. There's kind of two parts really: James Bond and Doctor Who. So I think it, they're probably thinking about this. You know, six months ago, eight months ago, and then it's about talking to people you know keeping it all really really secret because I was like whoa okay that's good absolutely they did they did a good job keeping it secret you or you contribute to the doc two magazine William oh, yeah. did you have any inkling that it might be JD Whitaker uh, I'd heard a few rumors at the very last minute I think the betting odds started to shorten um, and those rumours started to swirl, and particularly because she maybe wasn't a name that lots of people knew, that gave it all the more credence. Because for someone you know who isn't a massive name to to be suddenly so popular in the betting, kind of suggested it might be going that way. But I was still really surprised at the reveal. Although if you look at her back catalogue, she's she has you know really really good credentials behind her. She's a great actress. She was really good in Broadchurch, and everybody's saying actually you know she's she's a, a stellar actress. So it's you know her time to really shine. Yeah, absolutely, and she was um, she was in Attack the Block, I remember her in as well. Um, and yeah, it's, she's shown a lot of range. Those very different roles. That role in Broadchurch is a really tough part to pull off, and I think it's going to be uh, interesting, particularly if, if that audience from Broadchurch comes over, seeing her doing something really, really different. Now we've got some comments coming in. Well, Emma is saying it's a step too far in political. Uh, correctness. Misha's saying, love the choice of Jodie, she's going to be brilliant. Casting point of view, I mean, looking at her, and that reveal at Wimbledon last night, she looked like she's already kind of there. Well, I was actually on a plane, so I was reading on a, a, an airplane yesterday in LA, I just kind of got here, so I, I, I just think people just got to wait. I mean, all this kind of thing, like, oh, it's not going to happen and all this, and what worries me is that I've seen a lot of comments, which is quite surprising, that are negative from females. So, to tap it into actually what you were saying earlier, um, Steve's just messaging saying we need better writers, not better actors. That's an interesting point. Do you know what? I'm going to say this because I'm a casting director at so says his peace of mind. I watched Doctor Who recently and I thought the, the casting is superb. I thought Peter was amazing. I thought, I thought Pearl was great. Um, but the storylines were a bit kind of odd and they kind of let them down. So I think not only this is a fresh start maybe for the, you know, the Doctor, but the BBC really need to have a look at getting some more interesting script writers because it's not just me there's a lot of people actually walking away from this show and it doesn't feel the same way as it was so who would was you like kid. to see writing them for the show do you know what i'd just like to see more interesting people more people that are, you know haven't written for the bbc for 20 years maybe get people from you know that have done movies maybe I mean, russell t movies. davies was amazing yeah of course he is but you know what times are changing you know and you have to go with the flow and you've got to get new blood in and we've got to be diverse we've got a woman doctor now maybe we should get maybe some, some female writers yeah. absolutely. absolutely absolutely so from the magazine point of view 
what have, what have people been saying? Has anybody been writing in? You know, what's the sort of feeling back at uh, Doctor Who HQ? Um, I know, know, know what I've seen on social media, which has been actually really positive, and I've been pleasantly surprised by quite how positive it was. I think there's lots of fans who, even a few years ago, would have been against the idea of a female Doctor, who now it's happened, and it, they're kind of faced with the reality, suddenly realise actually it's nothing to be scared of at all. Well, it was mooted in 63, though, wasn't it, that, that the Time Lord could be a Time Lady? Uh, well, when he, I mean, when he first regenerated, that was in the six. That was a huge thing then. I mean, if you imagine, if we'd had social media at the time, just the idea that the Doctor was changing would, you can imagine people saying, you know, that's the end of the show for me. William Hartnell isn't the Doctor. What's the point? And people adapted to that change um, until 1987. We'd never had a Scottish Doctor, and then Sylvester McCoy came along. So and I they've all had a range of accents. We've had received pronunciation, Scottish accents, Northern accents. All the comments coming in is lovely. Keep on punting in with your comments. We've got um, so Lance says, you know, oh, why is everybody moaning? You do realise this is an alien. That's been a real comment theme and it's been quite funny saying you know why not this is a bit ridiculous and a lot of people saying you know B and Tina saying give her a proper chance but they also want really good sci-fi stories it's all about the stories and it's all about the scripts but the great thing is we've got people talking and trust me the people that don't want to want um, her as the doctor are all going to be watching so I think the BBC have played a really really clever kind of trick as well meaning they've got attention from all over the world because even in LA it was all over the press in LA and it's, it's been all over I mean Doctor Who is loved you know all over the world so we've just got to wait we've got to give her a chance and trust me we're all going to be watching that first episode but it's great because the show that's been going for that long you know I remember watching it as a child I watch it now all my friends watch it with their kids you know it, you know the generations are watching we've got a lovely just that might be nice for you two to hear this um so Jody went to um the Guildhall School of Music and Drama and they've all said how proud and delighted they are she was a student there she said she worked with faultless integrity and was a wonderful ensemble player who always brought her individuality to the group do messages in and see what you think. I mean, I remember her in Doctors. So funny that she's gone from being in Doctors to playing, the, you know, the Doctor. But she, you know, even then, you watched her, and you, she's got. There's something about her that I think is really special. It's that individuality. I think has been really important with all of the Doctors. They all bring something of themselves to the role, and that's really important to have that charisma, that ability to carry. You know, what's a really complex show having to churn out all this kind of technobabble dialogue keep the audience on side keep them engaged have a great relationship with your companion um, it needs someone that kind of has that sparkle and and in that little clip which is all that we've seen of her so far there's that little smile she has which is a really really nice indication of where she might go yeah there's some there is something about her we've got some lovely comments coming in so you know bruce maureen and elizabeth um saying good choice uh, lorraine hasn't watched since john pertwee well that is quite a long time ago isn't it and you know what i was I was just saying before this that I used to watch the reruns with John Pertwee and these little buggies and everything like that, and I loved it. I really loved it, uh, and I and I, and I want to watch Doctor Who like it was for me, like as a kid. But though, you know, what what seems to be happening now is that we've got this huge budget kind of Doctor Who kind of thing going on, but to me the scripts are just deteriorating slightly. So hopefully this will be a revamp of. Was well, a nice refreshing start? So who was, who's your, been your favourite Doctor today? I think mine's probably maybe. David Tennant or one of the bakers or actually no Peter Davison for me do you know what there's, there's as I said Don Pertwee there's um, Tom even the previous doctor I thought Peter was great I loved his assistant I thought I thought absolutely fantastic who do you oh actually you know talking of assistants who do you think is going to be the assistant could we have a male assistant for the female doctor it's quite possible that'd be a really different dynamic so, I mean I mean although two women in the TARDIS would also be a really different dynamic um, I, uh, we, I've seen chat online about maybe Luke Treadaway who um, there was betting on him to be the doctor maybe he's not going to be the doctor maybe he's going to be the companion and you'll have a young male companion with a, this new female doctor or yeah maybe you have two women in the Artist. Does it really matter nowadays, really, what, 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 if we're having a male or we're having a female companion? I mean, you know, in my office, I'll be honest with you, I, I've got a lot of female staff because yeah. they're really hard workers and they're yeah. dynamic and it doesn't really make a difference to us. So, you know, whatever works, works, really. But it is the ultimate kind of role that you want to do. I mean, listen, everyone in a dream reality would love to play. I was going to say, who would doctor. not? It's like James yes. Bond. Who wouldn't wow. want to be the Doctor? Who was your favourite then? We were chatting just now. Oh, um, I'm a Sylvester McCoy man, definitely. I think um, he's, he had a really good run of stories and had this brilliant kind of twinkle and... Um, 
kind of mysterious tone to him that I really liked. I wonder if there'll be nods to the to the other doctors as well, because there was always the scarf and there've been the hats that have kind of you know been a running theme throughout it. You know, it'd be interesting from a costume designer's point of view. You know, will they make nods to the to the previous doctors? Because I think that's always quite fascinating as well. It's, you know, they're modernising it, but also will there be sort of nods to the past? I think she should be a very kind of Vivian Westwood kind of doctor because I think I think Doctor Who was very Vivian Westwood. Then he read the little things and you got Peter Davison. See, this is now I'm getting a bit nerdy because. I'm remembering all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so I remember we used to have the little kind of, you know, always have the scarf and they used to have the little thing and they have something there. So yeah, I'm just imagining this to be a bit Vivian Westwood and it's just a bit cool. A bit Vivian, I like that. So message us in actually, what do you think? So for Jodie Whittaker's uh, foray into the world of Doctor Who, what should her costumes be like? That'll be interesting. And will the TARDIS change, I wonder? You know, from, you know, from the whole design point of view, this is their chance to really kind of rewrite history. I mean, the, um, I can't see the outside change, although maybe they'll build a nice new prop. Um, but the inside, that's changed quite regularly over the last few years as they change uh, the desktop wallpaper, they call it. And so, yeah, there's a, a chance to have a completely new interior, um, get the builders in and see what comes out. Well, there's certainly one thing for sure. It's really got everybody talking. Do punt in. We're going to stay online um, for a couple more minutes. Well, Christine, she said there are more similarities than differences. Leslie's saying she used to watch from behind the sofa. Well, me too. I mean, you know, the Daleks in particular, we've got one next to us, which uh, we found just moved oh, just now. Good. We'll give him a little push. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he might come alive any minute now. But yeah, that is, it's still, that's the other thing. It's still quite terrifying, you know, for all ages. I, I watch it now and think it's actually quite scary. I went to, um, there was a live action Doctor Who experience uh, a few years ago in Ipswich and they had a, one of the uh, Weeping Angels. Oh, they were Genuinely, awful. you were in a corridor and the lights went out and suddenly it was closer and then the lights went out again and suddenly it was, it was genuinely terrifying. Even though you knew it was clearly not real, it was terrifying. There's a, there's a lot of fun that could be had, I think, with the whole design. Everybody's saying, absolutely brilliant decision. Good luck, Jody. So, you know, some really positive comments, and I think overall it's been really positive, and some lovely videos online, because nobody had a clue, and I think that was the thing. That big reveal, it really was a surprise. It hadn't broken on Twitter before. I nobody think the BBC knew. do really good at that, revealing who... The, you know, the next doctor's going to be. Sue Barker reading out in Wimbledon. I like that. That was, <laughs> was, that was a nice was touch, that, wasn't I, it? I was on a plane. I just, but, but before, they were just, you know, they kept it all done. And I was pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly surprised. I was, in a good way. I was with um, a whole lot of people who were kind of talking about how they, you know, they weren't very interested in the tennis, but they were absolutely adamant they had to be there ready to see who the new doctor was. Oh, brilliant. Well, Mark and William, thank you so much for joining us here in uh, TARDIS uh, Corner at the BBC. Thank you very much indeed. So, yes, watch this space. So, Jodie Whittaker will be the new time lady on our screens as of next year. Thank you very much for joining us on our lovely Facebook Live, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye for now.